Hi, this is Ming Chu, the injury guru. I'm a soft tissue physical therapist located here in New York City. And today I want to talk about um, top 10 things that you can do to improve your soft tissue and myofascial health. I don't know if anyone's ever done a study on the actual mass of the body regarding the percentage of fascia or connective tissue in the human body but it has to be pretty darn high. I would say it's at least 30% of the mass of the human body is uh, made up of connective tissue and fascia. Hence, it is very, very important to maintain the health of your connective tissue and fascia. And these are the top 10 things that I suggest that you folks out there who wanna get healthy and be pain-free do on a, on a regular basis to maintain fascial health. Number one, hydration. I think everyone should be drinking anywhere between two and three liters of pure, purified, unadulterated water. I'm not talking about seltzer water or these sugar waters that they have or these uh, waters that they put uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things in it. You just need pure water and you wanna drink this water on an empty stomach whenever possible. That's number one. So it's two to three liters for the average person. If you're a large person and you exercise and sweat a lot, closer to three liters. If you're a smaller individual, two liters. Second thing is you must supplement. A lot of people don't think that supplementation is important. I think with the way our foods are made these days, with the soils being depleted and the soils being denuded with no minerals left in the soil or very little, and the over farming practices that we have here in the States, that the fruits and vegetables that you're eating today are not with minerals anymore. That's why it doesn't taste that good. So that banana that you think has potassium in it may not have it. That orange that you think may have vitamin C may not have it. So you have to supplement at this point. Uh, I've been supplementing for years and uh, I honestly have not been sick for over a decade. I don't even catch colds. Uh, so I do attribute it to taking supplements. And the supplements I recommend is a really good multivitamin, multimineral product. And then you also should supplement that with colloidal trace minerals. And in addition to that, you need some really good essential fatty acids, namely uh, fish oils. You have to make sure that the fish oils are not rancid. Uh, I prefer that you don't use liquid fish oil. I prefer that you use uh, fish oil that's in capsules and you make sure that you put it in the refrigerator uh, once you open up the, the bottle. You should always store it in the refrigerator also because Fish oils tend to get rancid very, very quickly. So those are the three uh, supplements. So number three, you have to also make some dietary changes. I would avoid gluten, avoid burnt and charred meats, avoid overheating your cooking oils, over, and also avoid eating too much sugar. All these things create inflammation. Uh, it could create, uh, cause cancer, heart disease, strokes, name it. it is, these things are very bad for you. So once again, avoid gluten, charred meats, overheating your, your, your cooking oils, even so-called good cooking oils like um, olive oil and coconut oil. If you burn it or you cook it for too long, it actually becomes oxidized and it causes all kinds of health problems. So don't overcook your oil or don't burn your oil. And try to, uh, when you, as you're cooking, keep the heat as low as possible to get the job done. <clears throat> Number four, do not undertrain and do not overtrain when you exercise. People who undertrain, they don't even go to the gym at all. They're just office workers. They sit on their butts for eight hours or more per day. For those individuals, I recommend something called the 220 rule. For every 20 minutes that you're in front of your computer or you're sitting down, you have to stand up and do these, uh, these stretches where you're moving and moving your arms above your head and doing these big gross motions to create blood flow and keeping uh, you know, things moving as opposed to just sitting there and everything becomes stagnant. So uh, the 220 rule for a person who does not exercise, so you have to not under train. And for those people that train who exercises on a regular basis, do not over train. If you are over 40 years old, I do not recommend more than three or four training sessions at about 45 minutes a piece. I recommend that you don't go past 75 to 90% of your maximum effort levels, so you're gonna push, but you're not gonna push ridiculously hard, 
particularly if you're over 40 years old. For younger populations, you can absolutely push harder, but people over 40, the body is a little bit more delicate, your hormones are not as good, your tissue is a little bit more fragile, so I recommend that you don't push terribly hard, but you have to push yourself enough that you're getting a decent workout without overtraining. Number five, you should get deep tissue massage roughly every two to three weeks for the rest of your life. Now that could be expensive, uh, but I do believe it will pay back in terms of the way you feel, back, feel about yourself and also uh, reducing pain and uh, preventing uh, other problems down the road. So deep tissue massage every two to three weeks, you have to get someone that really have really good hands that can get into the tissue. And you know, the, some of the deep tissue work can actually be a little uncomfortable as some of my patients would complain, but when they get off the table or when you get off the table, you should feel, wow, that felt really good. Even though it was kind of uncomfortable at the time, it felt right. And that's when you know you have a really good massage therapist. So a deep tissue massage is number five. Number six is if you cannot afford deep tissue massage, I, I would suggest you do something called self-myofascial release. And that uh, those are things like foam rollers. I like the ones that are a little harder with the nobbles on it. So you roll on that to roll out your lumbar spine, your IT band, or your thoracic spine, or even your neck if you get a smaller foam roller. It's not as uh, direct or is it not as precise as a, a qualified, high quality uh, massage therapist, but it's better than nothing. You can also use lacrosse balls to do things where you wanna get areas that are in tighter places where a foam roller cannot get. So a lacrosse ball would also work. Uh, you can also use uh, these little myofascial balls on, on your feet if you have uh, plantar fasciitis, things of that nature. So self myofascial release, and I recommend you do it at least two to three times a week for about 15 minutes each time if you cannot afford to uh, hire out a massage therapist. Number seven, you uh, ideally should be doing myofascial stretches and spinal decompression stretches. And if you don't know what they are, I suggest that you buy my book, The Permanent Pain Cure. I have a copy right here. And I wrote this book uh, way back a few years ago. And this book will outline in great detail um, a lot of the stretches that I call fascial stretches and spinal decompression stretches that you can do to make sure that individual muscles and the spine at different levels of the spine uh, will remain healthy and open because you don't want the areas to become adhesed. You don't want the areas to scar down because that's when you're going to have all these myofascial aches and pains that can lead to all kinds of issues that may appear to be an orthopedic issue or a neurological issue. But if you actually trace it back, it's a soft tissue myofascial issue, which can be avoided by doing these uh, stretches from my book. My book is called The Permanent Pain Cure, so go check it out. Uh, <clears throat> and you, all need to, you only need to do that about two or three times a week if you don't have any real specific problems. And each session should only take about 15 minutes. So it's not, uh, it's not that uh, difficult to do in terms of your time. The, the effort level, when you actually do the stretches, uh, it, it's gonna require some effort and some concentration, but the, the results are well worth it. You can check out the reviews on Amazon for the people who have bought the book and they actually talk about a lot of the injuries that they healed themselves that their physical therapist couldn't heal with them. So they did it all on their own just by doing the stretches and the suggestions in the book. Uh, the other thing is number, uh, number eight will be getting myofascial treatments. Like myself, I'm a physical therapist that specializes in myofascial therapy and uh, the work is very precise, it's very intense. It's, uh, it's another level up beyond traditional massage because it involves all types of sophisticated myofascial uh, techniques that include stripping techniques, uh, stretching techniques, decompressing you know, joints, for example. All this is, is uh, what I do with my patients when you get myofascial therapy. Uh, I suggest you get at least one hour of myofascial therapy by a really competent, experienced uh, manual therapist roughly every six to eight weeks if you don't have any specific problems. Obviously, if you have a problem, you should come in more frequently and it should be done at least uh, once every uh, once a week or so to resolve the problem. Usually when I treat a patient, it takes between three and six sessions 
to cure any general problem. That's always been my history. Uh, so you won't be here forever. Uh, if you have even a fairly, apparently a, fa a fairly serious injury, it can be healed in a relatively short period of time. Number nine, you have to rest. Now, what does that mean? I know people that they go to the gym, they work out for an hour in the morning, they have a full day's work stressed out at work, and then they do maybe even a second, you know, uh, you know uh, spin class at night, and they never seem to rest, and it jazzes up their nervous system to the point where they can't even sleep. So if you're not resting, you are not healing. So if you have all types of myofascial aches and pains and you are not resting sufficiently and you're overtraining, like I said before, if you're over 40 years old, I don't recommend more than three to four workouts at about 45 minutes at a pop, uh, simply because it's so easy to overtrain in a stressful environment. Uh, of course, there are outliers out there. There are people that can train a lot more than three or four times a week for 45 minutes each. But the average person, I think it's a good rule to follow. Okay, so do not overtrain and make sure you get your rest. If you continue to stress yourself out, your cortisol levels tend to rise. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It's a hormone that helps you get up and go. But if it stays too long, too high, you tend to get high blood pressure, uh, high sugar levels too, because that's what cortisol does. And also it can decrease your cognition or your brain capacity in the way you think. So you can get confused if you're overtrained and underrested. So you have, it's very important that you don't overtrain and you have to get the proper amount of rest. Okay, and number 10, the last one is sleeping. Sounds simple, but if you can get roughly eight hours of sleep, uninterrupted, very deep sleep, and you wake up and you wake up refreshed, you probably did something really good for you. I also recommend, if possible, a 20, 30 minute nap in the afternoon after lunch. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a deep sleep. In fact, I don't recommend going past 30 minutes because at that point it becomes a deep sleep. You just want a nap just to let your body digest, let's say after lunch, and it prepares you for the second half of your work day. Uh, I know that certain companies, progressive companies, they actually promote uh, taking naps in the afternoon, not because they actually love their workers, but it actually, well, maybe they do, uh, but it's actually to improve productivity from their workers. They knowing that they they know that uh, by by giving the uh, worker uh, a nap time, that they actually work much more efficiently in the second half of the day. I personally nap almost every single day, about twenty to thirty minutes after lunch. And uh, my, my second half of the day is just as good as my first half. So think about doing the naps. I remember also uh, I had a, a great uh, acupuncturist and he said to me, and he was right, he says, more than any Chinese herb, vitamin or exercise program or smoothie is a good night's sleep to make you feel better. So uh, you have to get good sleep. If you do these 10 things, I'm pretty sure that your connective tissue will thank you and your pain levels will drop, your overall health will be better, and uh, you can avoid that trip to the doctor. Uh, so I'm, what I'm trying to do here is to give you the, the uh, elements that I consider very important for self-therapy and self-care. Now, of course, I have to say this, uh, that the, uh, this video content is not intended uh, to be a substitute for professional medical advice, uh, diagnosis, or treatment. I suggest that you get uh, a, a great uh, naturopath or, or a medical doctor that understands, uh, you know, using food as medicine, vitamins and minerals as a form of healing. Unfortunately, most doctors uh, are not taught these things in medical school, in fact, uh, I have a number of my friends who are medical doctors and I asked them how much uh, did you get to learn about using food as medicine, using vitamins and minerals as part of therapy and they said to me about one hour. So that's a very small amount of time to really master anything, uh, just studying something for one hour. So when you're seeking out someone that is to give you advice on food as medicine, and taking vitamins as a form of therapy, you have to get someone that truly understands. And I think a naturopath would understand or a complementary medical doctor that incorporates other things other than pharmaceuticals as a way to heal their patients. So once again, uh, 
I'm just another face, uh, another person posting uh, a YouTube video. So make sure you get <clears throat> the advice from a medical professional that is well qualified to help you. Try these 10 things. Let me know how it works out. If you need to contact me, you can look at my website and contact me through the website at mingmethod.com. This is Ming Chu, the injury guru. And uh, I hope uh, your fascia becomes nice and fit and, um, and your life will be better. Take care. Bye-bye.